talk a little bit about conversions. Let's just say here that we have one dozen of eggs. How many eggs we got? All right, can you use that number? What do you think? I'm sure you can, right? Let's just suppose that we have six eggs. How many dozen we got? Half a dozen. Half a dozen. Wonderful. Okay, here's what we got. We have 12 eggs and one dozen. Are you with me? Eggs will cancel, so what is 6 divided by 12? 0 0.5 eggs. A uh, dozen. Eggs. Does that make sense to you? So where does the 12 come from? Does anybody know? I mean, why are they running with pick 12? Some kind of, you know, I've, I've read that, right? Um, that it is some kind of an English measure talking about number of stones and this and that, this old timey thing. I've also read that it's about um, the number of disciples. Christianity, that way whenever you uh, bought a dozen, you would constantly be reminded of Jesus and all this. Okay, But the point of the story is, is we're uncertain of where that number comes from, but that does not stop it from using us. Yes or no? Okay. Alright. So one mole is the same thing of 6.02 times 10 to the 23 whatever. So if you had a mole of donuts, how many donuts would you have? 6.02 to 10 to 23. All right. John, was you in the room when I said with no class tomorrow? Yes. Okay, I didn't want you to be out there and me forgot about you. All right. So one mole is 6.02 to 10 to 23. So where does that come from? Well, so you don't know, right? But it won't stop you from using it. Now, I suppose we could get into a whole big thing about monolayers and troughs and Langmuir Blodgett and this and that. And maybe we could talk about exactly the origin of that number. But one of the story is, is we don't need to do that to be able to use it. This right here can go on the top or the bottom as long as this goes on the other side, right? Because what are we trying to do? Get units to cancel. So that means we can cancel from moles to grams, grams to moles, grams to atoms, and that. All right, so how big is this number? All right, well, that number's pretty big. Now, let's just suppose, all right, that we go and we win the lottery. Let's say we win a million dollars. All right, this right here is a million dollars. So who in here can conceptualize a million dollars? Can you conceptualize that? I mean, has anyone ever saw a million bucks in a briefcase? What do you think? Anyone here ever did? I mean, there's a few people that do, right? Talking about the Marine Corps. If you are a Marine in disbursement, you're going to see that money because how do you think that they're going to build an Army base or a Marine base? Do you think the Marines just go over there with a governmental credit card and buy whatever they want from the Iraqis? I think not. They've got to have cash to pay these people off. <laughs> to get supplies whenever they're first getting started, right? Now, once they get the base there, then we can bring stuff from America. So, the point of the story is, a million bucks is unusual for a normal person. What's this number in scientific notation? One times 10 to the one. Sixth. All right. Well, if you can't envision a million bucks, certainly you cannot envision twice that much. Two million dollars in a briefcase, right? What's that number in scientific notation? 2 times 10 to the 6th. Notice that times 10 to the 6th thing ain't a changing. That's what they call an order of magnitude. You would have to increase this up to 10 million dollars before that changed to a 7. All right. So if someone ever tells you you're off by an order of magnitude, that is a huge insult. That means you've missed the mark completely. You're completely an idiot off, all right? Because you can notice if you're off by enough to affect a, 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 a power, you're off tremendously. All right, so what would happen if you was to win a mole of money 6.02 times 10 to 23 dollars. How long would that take you to spend it? 
You don't think she could spend it? Well, what do you guys guess? Do you think you could spend it? Buy an How much? Yeah. Buy an island? Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, let me ask you, some of you high-maintenance high, uh, high ladies in here, how much money do you think you could spend an hour? If I was to give you a credit card, you could use it anywhere in the world, right? Do anything you wanted. How much money could you spend in an hour? Ten grand? Two hundred dollars an hour? How much can you do? Oh, is it okay? Raise your hand if you're the highest maintenance girl in the classroom, right? How much could you spend an hour? Depends on if I've got a jet or. You got anything you want? You got all the money in the world? No, I have to go buy it. Okay, then how much you want? How much you want to spend? Uh, I could probably spend a million an hour. Million an hour. All right. Buy big things. Well, let's just say that Bonnie over here wanted to spend $900 million every second. Uh -huh. She don't think she can do that. $900 million a second, not an hour, a second. 365 days a year, seven days, even when she's sleeping, she's got a way to spend money, all right? All right. <clears throat> So how long is that going to take her? Anybody got any guesses? Is it going to take days? Weeks? Years. Years. How many? Two. Anybody got another guess? Let's do it. How many seconds are in a minute? Oh, well, you guys are on top of this. 60 seconds in one minute. How many minutes are in an hour? All right. How many hours are in a day? 24. All right, and how many days do you want there to be in your year? All right, 365 days in a year. All right. And we'll leave it alone at that, right? I know leap years in there and all this wonderful drama. Let's see here. 6.02. That's 10 to 23. Divided by 900 million dollars. Divided by 3,600. Okay, Bonnie. Oh, the two's right. Look at that. What do you think? Two's right? Take her 21 million years to, solve, to spend that kind of money. 21 million years. Long time, right? But, if you talk about chemistry and you talk about the atoms, all right, there are that many atoms in one mole of plastic. So if you could get down on your spaceship and start counting, you would count 6.02 to 23 atoms right here. You'd be able to count those. All right, now could you count that in a lifetime, right? Because there ain't no way you can count 900 million things every second. So certainly you're not going to be able to count those atoms in a lifetime, right? Are we doing good? What's the point of the story? It's a huge number, right? If you go to the beach and you stand on the beach as far as you can see, so many of you guys on that last test with that five-point extra credit that everybody gets credit for no matter what you write, I love to read those things, but especially this class, very articulate people. Uh, if you look as far as you can see on the beach, like seven or eight miles out, and you was to count every piece of sand between where you're standing and where you see, you're never going to get there. Sand's deep, people. But if you count these atoms just right here in this pin top, you'll get there. All right, so it's a huge number, something that's unfathomable to even think about. All right. Now, why would we even think about this? Well, the periodic table is based on this number. You say, well, wait a minute. I thought the periodic table was based on the number of protons and neutrons within an atom. That's true. So if you take nitrogen as an example, all right, we said that that weighed 14 AMU, 14.01, whatever the number happens to be, atomic mass units. But we are now can change that number to 14 grams per mole. All right. 
those are interchangeable now.